Welcome to the video today, everyone. What I'm going to be doing is taking these maps, which are all a specular workflow. So there's diffuse, glossiness, IOR, reflection, and I'm going to be converting them into metalness. And then once I have the metalness workflow, I'm going to convert them all back to specular so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the webcam today just because I had actually already recorded this and I thought I messed up quite a few times and I wasn't as to the point as I needed to be. So I'm going to refilm it just so that I can, uh, give a little more condensed information, which I think is a little more accurate. Uh, this video is not for any particular software. This is just a general PBR materials video. So this works with Lumion 3ds Max Blender. As long as you understand what maps you need, I'm going to hopefully show you all of the ones that you need to get the effect that you want in the software. So I hope everyone will stay to the end of the video and I hope you learned something. All right, so we're good to get started. Now, what I have here is I have the specular maps I just talked about and also a metalness. So I'm going to create an entire workflow in metalness. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I need my color map. That's kind of the main map that you would expect. And this is the one that messed me up the most because I don't completely understand why this is such a popular way of doing it. But with the diffuse map, it's, it's just a color map, except the metals, the color comes from the reflection map. So if I pull up, the other photo here. So this is what the reflection looks like in a specular workflow. Now, I don't, again, this seems very unintuitive to me, but this is just how it is. So I think this is just kind of how Autodesk did it a long time ago. And I think that's kind of what's uh, stuck, but really all the color map is going to be is these gray areas over these black areas. And then that has the effect. So that's the one that we're going to make first. Uh, and it is the one that I think is the most important to get right. So First things first, we're going to drop this in. I'm going to go to layers. I'm just going to tick this and then I'm going to drop in. Oh, you want to drop the reflection on top of this, by the way, you don't want it to go over here because it makes its own tab, which is easily fixable, but it's just a little bit faster if you're doing a lot of materials like this. So I'm going to grab the magic wand. I'm going to, I set my tolerance to five. I find that works pretty well. And then as you can see, I also have, uh, I don't have contiguous, um, set up here. So if I have that. Then as you can see, it, it will stop. But if you have this ticked off, then you'll get all of them at once. So it's not a big deal. If you just click this on, it's going to just select them one by one, but I'm just going to delete that. And now you have this map. So, you know, if I was making this map for some a model, um, this is the leather and I, I don't really like the gray leather look. So I'd probably make this white, but this is tip technically how it was intended to be done. So just like that, we've made a color map. So I'm going to go to export. I'm going to go into the metalness. I'm going to call this color. Okay, cool. So then the color's done. And the next one that we need to do is the roughness map. So glossiness, this is probably one of the easiest ones. The glossiness is just the inverse of the roughness map. So if you just hit control I, now we have a roughness map. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to export. We're going to go into metalness, roughness. Awesome. Okay. And obviously that one is very simple. Uh, I believe another, uh, another example of this is opacity and translucency are just the inverse of each other. So if you have a opacity map, but it's, it's doing the wrong areas, I believe you can just invert it. And then the maps will interchange like that. It, the, the workflows do have some parallel or I guess inverse uh, relationships in that respect. So I actually used to think that glossiness and roughness were the same thing, but they are, they are similar. It's just that they're showing the opposite value. So once you invert them, then you can just flip flop between them. The next one that I'm going to do is metalness. This is also a very important one. So there's two ways of doing it. And I'm going to show you how that works. Also, I, I will just move this one over because uh, I believe the normal map shouldn't have to change. Sometimes you'll have to invert the green channel. Um, but I, I don't know exactly when that is. I don't think that's a specular and a metalness thing. I think that that just depends on the kind of normal map you have. So I know with Unreal Engine, you do have to flip uh, the green channels very often. So I believe that when it's coming from Evermotion or Polygon, I don't think you have to flip the green channels. But if the normal map is looking strange, you can just inspect that and uh, you can. Well, actually, I might as well just show this. So if you, you can bring this in here and you can go to channels, if you go green channel, 
So you want it so it's, this is clicked, hit control I, and then it will invert your selection. And that that really is it. it. It's that simple. So this one is not really related to this one, but I figured I might as well mention it. So it's a little free bit of information that uh, people may like to see. Uh, right. So the metalness right now is color, normal roughness. Pretty good. Specular. Now I'll show you the two ways that you can make a metalness map from this. So the first one is the IOR. Pretty simple. All we're going to do is we're going to make this gray area white. So the way that I typically do it is I just click here. I, you know, this again, this is a part that like you can do it a couple different ways. You can brush this in with white. I just like to do a uh, layer via cut. And then I just go up here to uh, raw camera filter. And I just turn the exposure. Oh, do you want to turn the exposure up? Hit OK. And you go file, export. So this is metalness. Metalness one. And sometimes I'm not sure why this is two, but sometimes you may just have to flip. Oh, oops. I guess you have to you'd have to flip this. You kind of get what I mean. So you have to invert them sometimes just to make it work with whatever program you're using. Uh, as long as you get the you know, this picture, right? Or as long as you get this picture, right, it doesn't really matter. So that is just something that I, I guess is worth mentioning. You just have to make them work. And that's why I want to do this as a broad video so that it, no matter what software you're using, you just have a better understanding of what you actually need to do just to manipulate the maps in the way that is required. So the next one that you can do is you can take this diffuse map I believe, or actually it's probably easier if we do the reflection map. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the best one. So I'll just drag that into its own new tab. Click on this. You're going to cut this out. So layer via cut. And then what you effectively did is you just separated this out, even though it's just, I just find it's easier to grab just the white than it is grabbing all the gray, but that's still fairly easy as well. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to this layer zero filter, raw camera filter. And then we're just going to make this this part black so you can take the exposure down you can take this down take the whites down and then if that's not enough you can kind of play around with this that's typically enough like this will pretty much blow out any uh any colors that needed to be and just turn them black so you hit okay and then as you can see we now have another metalness map so it's just a couple different options if you don't have an ior i find that one works the best the ior the, the gray area typically just has to turn white and then you have a metalness map but just in case you don't have it there's a couple different ways that you can go about doing that. Now that we have the metal in this workflow, I'm going to show you how to convert it back into a specular. So the way to get the diffuse map, I find this works the best. We're going to drop in the metal in this map. Then we're going to drop in the color map. So we're going to put the color below the metal in this. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select with, I don't think the tolerance really matters because there's such contrast here, but you're going to select with the magic wand, the black areas here. And then we're going to right click layer via cut. Uh, and I will note just the way that I find this is fastest too is take the metalness and drop it in first because then uh, it's just it's faster to convert it that way because I'm trying to do this in the way that I think is the, the fastest just since uh, if you have to do this with like 20 textures you don't want to have to spend you know five minutes on each of them playing around with it. So I find that works well. Turn off this layer and then th there is kind of a, a line going around the edges here that doesn't really matter that 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 won't show up um, in your model. And if it does, you can make some adjustments, but I think for kind of the fast and dirty way, this is definitely good enough. So I'm going to go to export specular two. I'm going to call this use. And then what we can do for the next one is we can turn this on like this, I believe. And what's kind of nice about this is that since these maps do interact like this, as you see, once we have the color map, all we can do is click the white layer that we created and now we have the reflection map so th th that just kind of helps how um kind of helps with understanding how these maps interact this is now a reflection so that one should be good what we're going to do now is we're going to grab the roughness drag this in and just like before control i to invert and we're back to our glossiness map that is all for that one glossiness and yeah, I, I guess with the normal map, again, you can just copy this one. Uh, it, it doesn't, I don't think it really matters is again, like the green channel thing might apply, but I, I think you just need to check your, check your normals because I'm, I'm not uh, too confident in saying exactly 
which softwares use what. I just know that if my normals are ever messed up, I just flip the green channel and then everything is good. So that is all for specular. I believe the last thing you need to know to really, uh, you know, kind of master how, how to convert your materials is if you have just this random color map. So let's pretend this is a leaf that we have on a plant um, and we want to just be able to cut everything out here. So you could go in, cut everything that's white, throw that on. And then sometimes the program will let you keep that as transparency. But if that doesn't work, we're going to make a real opacity map. So you drop this into Photoshop. We're going to click here with the magic wand again. As you can see, the magic wand is an amazing tool for doing this. And then you're going to layer via cut. And then we have this one separated out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this layer here. So we want the leaf layer, go filter, camera, raw filter. And again, there's probably better ways of doing this. This is just the way that I kind of learned. So I enjoy doing it like this. And you drag down the exposure, drag down the whites and the blacks if you need. And then you're going to get that really crisp black outline. And then that's what you have. So what you can do now is export this and you're going to get the opacity map. And what you can also do is if you have an opacity map, but it's, it's, it's just messed up. Like, you know, it's, it's take, it's cutting out the leaf and none of this white area, just take your saved image. Cause you, I'm assuming that you would have this at this point. This may not be for this particular leaf, obviously. And what you're going to do is control I, and now you have the translucency, I believe. And that's basically saying that everything that's white here is going to be kept and everything else is uh, going to be cut. Now, again, I sometimes mess up opacity and translucency. It doesn't really matter or transparency. It, it I don't think it really matters. It's just basically saying like, as long as you know how to separate these maps out, just play around with it as much as you need. Uh, typically the programs I use is opacity. And I, I think I might've been mixing them up. I believe this is actually an opacity because it's saying that everything that's black is going to get cut. And then this one is a, I believe transparency or translucency. I've seen them called both, but uh, I believe transparency is the correct way of saying this map, except for this one, this black area is going to be kept and all the white is cut out. So it, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Like I said, as long as you understand what map you need, I'm just trying to show you the tools of how I go about manipulating these maps to get exactly what I want. So the last little thing I wanted to do is I'm going to open up these specular maps that I made. And we're just going to compare them to see if I'm close. So I, I believe these should all be good, but I just want to make sure that all of our converted maps are going to look pretty similar to the originals. These ones are the originals. They're from Evermotion. So I'm going to say that those are, you know, perfect maps. Maybe there's some little issues with them. Not really my problem. I think Evermotion uh, knows what they're doing when it comes to these maps. So we're going to say that these are perfect maps and we're going to see how close my conversion was. Mind you, I was just converting it from this base one too. So there shouldn't be you know, huge differences, but I think that this will just kind of show the point that I was talking about armchair specular two. Okay. So let's pull up these two here. You might get some very slight color changes just from the back and forth. Uh, as you can see, there is like a faint white line. I think that's going to be so small. You're not even going to see it. Uh, and the gray here does look a little bit lighter, but it's, it's close enough that I would say that that worked for the glossiness. This one should be the exact same because I'm just, all I did for the roughness was I inverted this one. So these should be the same. And then the reflection is the same kind of deal as the, the color map. So as you can see, they, they're basically the same. You may just be losing a little tiny sliver around the edge, which is just a, a magic wand thing, I think. But yeah, overall that that's basically it. So hopefully this video sheds some light on the workflows that you need to use. You know, so many times when I began with ArchViz, I would get a new model and it'd be in specular. And then I'd go into Lumion, it'd be like a black material. I didn't really understand how the maps work. So I really hope that this just kind of help people along. It's, it's very simple once you get the hang of it. And from just a couple of maps, you can actually make quite a few more, but the ones I went over are the basic ones that you really need. Like these are the, the important ones. And then, you know, there may be some other little maps that you can kind of learn down the road, but this should get you probably 95% of the way there. If you found the video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, if you are one of my subscribers, I just want to say thank you very much for supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great weekend, everyone.